Squad, it's quads. Welcome back to another honest and genuine review. iFlight have uh, very kindly sent me the Commando 8. This is a gamepad style controller or transmitter with ELRS built into this particular version. Other models and connections are available. So let's get into the review. So the iFlight Commando 8 offers 500 milliwatts of ELRS power in this particular configuration. And it's brilliant for newbies. So it has two momentary switches, SWA and SWD. Now these are used primarily for arm and in my personal opinion, the other one should be used for pre-arm. The other two switches are SWB and SWC and these are three position momentary switches or three position rocker switches. On one of them I have set the beeper and turtle mode and on the other I have set angle mode for whenever you need to get out of trouble and GPS return to home. Now a lot of seasoned pilots will think oh you shouldn't have angle mode set. However, if you're doing something and you start to lose signal, the best thing you can do is put it in angle mode and instantly gain altitude that way you don't have to worry about how you're controlling it or what direction you're going in and the chance is once you've instantly gained some altitude you should then have your signal back or your control link we've obviously got the two menu switches as well to navigate through and to select the menus and on the underside of the radio we've got an sd card slot for the models it's not really needed if i'm honest on a radio like this the power button and of course the USB type C switch. That can be used for charging, it can also be used for the simulator. On the back there is a couple of covers that can be removed to tighten up the gimbals which is the first thing I'm now going to do now I've concluded my testing. There are no other inputs so whilst I will recommend this as a fantastic first ELRS controller for somebody who is new to the hobby there is a caveat to that and that is if you were to fly a model with more modes for instance fixed wing you're going to run out of switches very very quickly and the chances you're not going to have enough switches and the other thing is if you fly in fixed wing or with a servo is there is no trainer port which means you can't use head tracking which again as a newbie the chances you probably going to want to outgrow this controller before you start doing things like um, however that's just something that you need to be aware of and something to be mindful of so as always the final question is should you buy it and the answer as always comes down to it depends it's a fantastic controller for a new bit the setup because of the simplicity of it is ridiculously easy ridiculously simple and it has 500 milliwatts of elrs built in Realistically, as a newbie, if you are wanting to, to, to get a controller that perhaps is as simple as possible and on a budget, then I would 100% recommend this. The caveat will always be you are going to outgrow it because there's not a huge amount of switches um, and there isn't obviously that trainer port. So I think overall, I'd, I'd give this a recommendation for a newbie, but I think if you're a seasoned pilot, unless you're looking for something that's really easy to put in a bag or your pocket and just go out and fly somewhere, and that, that's where this really does excel. It, you know, similar to the TBS Tango and all the other sort of gamepad style controllers. It's easy to put in your pocket and just go, especially if you're flying a, a micro as well. So the portability really gives it a good plus as well. And especially if you are somebody that's been brought up on, on video games, you'll find the gamepad style controller a lot easier than the traditional style. So overall, I'm going to give this I'm going to give this a pass if you are a newbie or if you are somebody that would prefer to fly with a game pass or a, sorry, a gamepad style controller. I'm going to give this ultimately a pass. If you're somebody who's a bit more experienced and is looking for something that's ultra portable, again, I would say, yep, this is this is worth doing. But just bear in mind, the lack of switches is quite chronic in comparison to things like the Radio Master Zorro, which has a lot more switches and is slightly more expensive, um, but is a similar size and a similar weight, and obviously offers um, a similar experience. The other thing, just to to mention very quickly is this does not have a JR module bay unless you can remove this one and I don't think you can looking at it 
Um, no, I'm going to say I don't think you can actually. I need to double check that and I'll put that in the description down below. So overall, yes, absolutely. This is well worth buying if you're a newbie or somebody who wants a gamepad style controller or somebody who wants something ultra portable. If you're somebody who's a bit more advanced that uses a model with a few more than a couple of switches or a couple of modes, a couple of switches, I would say this might be a pass for you. But I'd like to thank iFlight for sending it to me. They have no editorial control over this video. They've not seen this video before it goes out and I'm not paid anything for this video. So I could have easily panned it, but I think it has its place and I think newbies will find it excellent. Um, I've let Boy Wonder FPV fly it and he thinks it's absolutely phenomenal because he's obviously, um, he's a young kid and he's brought up on, on video games so he thinks it's phenomenal and also Jedi FPV has had a had a go with it again and he recommends it so overall it's a, it's a definite for me but with those caveats. I've been Quads, you've been amazing.